Our film critic here in the Keys, Cheryl Rhodes, is back with us today. You can check out Cheryl's movie reviews every Sunday in Solaris Hill. Now, hopefully the new year brings in some unforgettable films. Cheryl's actually going to take a look back on the year in movies. He's composed a top ten list of 2012. Cheryl, overall, would you say that 2012 was a good year of movies? I think it was a good year, not a great year. Uh, it's the type of movies that I think are more entertaining than uh, uh, what you would say will become classics. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were a lot of entertaining movies, and looking back on them, uh, uh, it was kind of fun to try to put together a top ten list. This is the time of year that most movie critics, almost by obligation, have to put together such a list, and mm -hmm. I have sort of... Uh, uh, you know, bowed to, to peer pressure. Mm -hmm. So here I am. All right. Okay. So you're going to start, of course, with number 10, right? I'm going to work my way down. Yeah. Okay. And, and let me first give you a little bit of a disclaimer in that uh, a lot of the top 10 lists that you'll see, like the New York Times and whatever, has a few films that won't be on our list because they're films that did not come here or I have not seen. And I don't think it's fair to kind of count those if we don't know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And those are films like Amour or Rust and Bones, which are foreign films that may make their way to the tropic eventually, but uh, uh, you know, we're waiting for those. Another one that's probably coming next week that's on a lot of lists is the Silver Linings Playbook, uh, which is a, a very good film with uh, Bradley Cooper as a guy who just got out of a mental institution, hooking up with a woman who has her own problems, played by Jennifer Lawrence. Not on my list, but it probably should be. Okay. There's a lot of other movies that should be on my list that I'll mention after we kind of go through the countdown, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll not hold me to this exact order, because when I look at them more closely before I write it for Thursday's Paradise, I might switch one or two points mm -hmm. here or there. But uh, my number 10 was uh, uh, The uh, Beast of the Southern Wilds. Okay. Uh, that is a wonderful little movie. It's almost more of a fable, almost like an allegory about a little girl growing up in the Louis Louisiana bayous. And, uh, uh, there's all this sort of impending doom coming on around her, which is more about her life and her relationship with her father who is sick and probably dying. And uh, it stars the, a, a little girl who's never been an actor before, uh, but who just walks away with the movie and is probably going to get nominated for an Academy Award. Oh, wow. So, so Beast of the Southern Wild, that's, that's on my list. Okay. Uh, next, I... I was debating between uh, The Sessions, uh, which is a, a movie uh, with Helen Hunt uh, that's quite good, and a documentary that uh, was my favorite documentary of the year, uh, Searching for Silver, uh, Sugarman. Mm -hmm. And I went with Searching for Sugarman because it's such a feel-good documentary. It's about a, uh, a musician from Detroit who uh, kind of cut a record, it went nowhere, and he went back into obscurity and went into construction work in Detroit, and everybody thought he died. There were rumors about him that he had died on stage, he had shot himself, he had, he had set himself on fire, all these things. But his record, somehow a bootleg copy got into South Africa, and it became a hit, and it became a legend, and it became so big, and everybody down there was playing it, and it sold millions of copies. And there was this one guy who owned a music store and another guy who was a music writer. Mm -hmm. They set out to find out the story behind this guy. And they actually traced down and got an email back from his daughter finding out that he's actually still alive. Mm -hmm. So they brought him over. He gave concerts. He was a huge star again. At, at mm -hmm. one time, he was bigger than the Beatles and the Rolling Stone in South Africa. And then after he did that, he went back to Detroit, went back to work doing construction and to his normal life. Mm -hmm. But it's such a feel-good movie. You just kind of walk away smiling and humming his music and, and saying, if he ever goes to a concert, I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, the, next on, the next on my list is, uh, is uh, one that a lot of critics are putting as their number one. Mm -hmm. And I just can't put it as my number one because I don't think it's going to have the popular appeal with audiences. It's too dark. It's too almost documentary-like. Uh, there's not enough character development. Uh, some of it is kind of murky and hard, hard to follow, and that's Zero Dark Thirty. Mm -hmm. And Zero Doc Dark Thirty is the movie by Catherine Bigelow, who won the Academy Award for Hurt Locker, and who's the ex-wife of James Cameron, who did Titanic. So she's quite a well-known, well-established director. And this movie is about the search for Osama bin Laden. And it takes place over 10 years where this one CIA agent keeps looking and looking and looking and searching, and they finally found him. And uh, it tells that story, but it tells it in a kind of a, uh, a very slow-moving, uh, 
not quite developing enough way for me. Mm -hmm. But like I say, a lot of people are putting it number one on their list, mm -hmm. but it's number eight on mine. Okay. Uh, number seven, uh, a movie that a lot of people walked out of with their head shaking, uh, Cloud Atlas. Mm -hmm. It was by the Warshawski brothers, the people that gave you the Matrix trilogy. Uh, it's a long movie. It's like six different stories interwoven. All the stars play multiple roles at multiple times, past and present, and, and back and forth in the future. And uh, it can be kind of a confusing movie in a way, unless you just sort of set back and let it happen. Mm -hmm. And after it happens, it all kind of forms a whole, a mosaic almost. And that is Cloud Atlas. It's number seven on my list. Number six on the list is a movie that you might say, well, this is not a top 10 movie. This is just pure popcorn entertainment. Uh, and that is The Dark Knight Rises, the mm -hmm. third in the Batman trilogy. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a well-made movie. It's got a good storyline. It's uh, got a very satisfying resolution. Uh, it's probably the best of the three of the movies. And uh, uh, I think it deserves to be on somebody's top 10 list. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though it it's, a, it's on mine, and, mm -hmm. and of course, as you know, I used to be the publisher of Marvel Comics, so mm -hmm. I like comic book movies, darn mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and so the, the Dark Knight La Rises, the Batman uh, uh, end piece uh, is on my list. Okay. Uh, next is a movie that uh, uh, was hard to make. It's, uh, it's a thousand page book condensed down into one movie, Anna Karenina. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's by uh, uh, Tolstoy, the Russian writer. And it's a tragic story about a woman who uh, has an illicit affair and winds up uh, throwing herself under a train. It's not a spoiler there. Everybody probably had to study the book in college at one point or another, mm -hmm. unless you slept through the class. Mm -hmm. and What's interesting about this, it's, uh, it's a movie that you would expect to be a period piece. In a way it is, there's beautiful costumes and all of that, but instead of going into the old houses and old buildings and doing it over and over and over again, the way you see with like Pride and Prejudice or whatever like that, they actually did it more like a stage set. Some of the backgrounds are painted, some of it looks like you're backstage, uh, and it switches back from real settings to stage settings, but it does it in a seamless way and it doesn't seem stagey. Mm -hmm. The camera moves, the people move, it's very exciting. And so it's, a, it's sort of a, a beautiful success of art direction where you would think it would fail. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would give it that just, just for darn effort. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then another movie that is kind of the exact opposite of that that works so well is Les, Mis, Les Miserables, uh, Les Mis, mm -hmm. the musical. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is filmed on a very uh, authentic looking background of Paris during the 1800s when the, uh, uh, the June Revolution was taking place. And uh, it's the story of redemption uh, about a man named Jean Valjean who is a criminal who tries to pull himself out of it, but this relentless uh, uh, policeman hounds him through his life. Mm -hmm. And he meets uh, 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 this beautiful young woman who has fallen on hard times, has had to sell her hair cut off, has had to turn to prostitution, and she dies and leaves her young daughter in his care. Mm -hmm. And it's a very upsweeping movie, and it's a musical. Mm -hmm. There's not a single word in the whole film that is spoken. It's all, all singing. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see that. And unfortunately, we're running out of time, Cheryl, so okay. I'm going to have to have you get through the list. Well, I've only got Four more to go, okay. or two, uh, th three more to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Moonrise Kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful fable by Wes Anderson. Uh, takes place on an island, two little kids uh, run away together and the police try to find them. And it's just magical realism and one of the best movies he's ever done. Then we have Steven Spielberg's Lincoln, a great historical drama, probably with Daniel Day-Lewis being the best movie Lincoln ever. And he'll probably get an Academy Award for it. And it's a must see movie. It's about passing the 13th, Amend 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. Mm -hmm. And then my number one movie. What is it? Might surprise some people, but mm -hmm. Argo. Really? With Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. I think Ben Affleck has redeemed himself. You know, there was a period when everybody said Matt Damon was the smarter of that pair, mm -hmm. and Ben Affleck, he was just sort of a hanger on. Not so. He's a brilliant filmmaker. Mm -hmm. uh, he's chose roles that he can, his acting looks good in, but his direction is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he tells a story about the Iran hostage crisis. And it's a story we all know, but he still tells it in a way that puts us on the edge of our seat. Mm -hmm. So it's great filmmaking, a great ride, good movie, entertaining, 
and I recommend it. Okay. Well, I recommend all of those movies. Check them out if you can. And, of course, check out Cheryl's Movie Reviews every Sunday in Solaris Hill. We're going to take a quick break right now. I'll be back with the South Florida Symphony Orchestra after these messages.